Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about the Unity Game Engine. Why are we talking about the Unity Game Engine? Well, because at GDC they just released their developer roadmap. So we're actually going to go through their slides directly. A number of Bothans died to bring those to this, so let's honor their sacrifice. And we're going to do this as quickly as possible. There is another version of this that they've covered on YouTube. It's about an hour long, so if you want a much longer version of it, you can do so. But today I'm going to focus mostly on, let's say, the... Um, the new features, the new announcements in this particular release, and we'll go from there. So this is the Unity uh, engine roadmap. Uh, nice thing is, if you go through here, they're actually gonna talk specifically about what's coming in specific versions. So we're gonna focus on that. It's a little bit light about the future. There's actually not a single mention of Unity 7 in here at all. Uh, and Unity 7, I think, is the one that a lot of people are waiting for because it's gonna break a lot of things. It's gonna be a core down redesign with a single pipeline, with .NET Core in the basis of it, and it's going to break a lot of backward compatibility. So we're focusing mostly on 6.x at this point in time, but there's a few things that are future reaching. So one thing that they did announce is that they are working with all of these companies. They've got staff on site working on these games. A lot of people have been asking for Unity to dog food. There was a certain project <coughs> that uh, was supposed to do exactly that. And they said, oh, well, we got 90% of the way there. Well, as everybody that works in game development knows, 90% is 10%. So if they hadn't brought, like that's a project they should have finished. And I know the entire community, it kind of wishes that they did. But at least they are dog fooding with product, with actual people developing products out there. So hopefully it means that you know the products or the features that they bring out that don't really work in production will be smoother. So we got a bit of a timeline of the future. Now when I say a bit of a timeline, our time axis is labeled as today and future. Today and future. So this is not going to be an incredibly precise timeline. The other thing you're going to notice here is they don't actually mention Unity 7 at all, which is strange. Uh, definitely a little bit strange because it has been announced, uh, but we're focusing mostly on what is coming in 6.x releases. A couple of things were also backported as well. So we'll go through, we're going to see it's labeled as available in Unity 2021 and 2022. Anything marked for that, I think you can look at it as a new feature that was ported back to those particular versions. And then 6 is available today. Coming in 6.1 will be very, very soon. 6.1 is currently in beta and should be out I don't know, within a month or two. Uh, 6.x is the future versions of 6, and then future, which I think is Unity 7, but they're not committed to a timeline on that one yet. So we're going to jump through and take a look at what is there. The first thing they announced was web. And on the web side of things, 6.1, we are finally getting web GPU support, which is pretty cool. On top of that, we're also getting support for instant games on Facebook and Messenger. And then uh, in 6, we got... Uh, I don't really understand what they're breaking down here because we had mobile web support before, uh, but yeah, so it runs games in mobile browsers. That might be it specifically, the browser support here, but the big thing is 6.1 is getting web GPU support. Moving on from there, uh, we move into the uh, platform browser and build profiles. These are new tools to make it easy to um, share and set up and configure build profiles and then platform setups. Uh, so you've got different profile configurations, recommended packages, etc., for particular platforms you're working on. And you would also do things like uh, configure graphics settings, quality levels and render settings, and save those and reuse them going forward. Should make setting up a nicer experience. On the Android side of things, as a person who is purely 100% in the cult of foldable phones, by the way. I will never buy a non-foldable phone going forward, I don't think. Uh, support for foldable phones is nice. So here we've got support for large screens and foldables. This is done at the API level, so you've got uh, things to qu uh, query how the hinges opened up, uh, it all configurable with C-sharp, newest versions of the, the um, Google versions and so on, of Android, sorry, APIs are supported here. Another thing about Android, so in Android 15, they added support for 16 kilobyte page sizes. And Google claims that this is about a 10% increase in performance on devices that support it. This is gonna be available and there's warnings for libraries and plugins in your projects that do not support it. This was backported to 2021 and 2022 and will be available in 6.1. Basically on Android, free performance. That's always kind of nice. And then we've got things here for Vulkan. This is going to automatically detect on newer devices if Vulkan is supported, the way to go, what features are supported, and so on. Available for 6 and 6.1. And then Android apparently are giving another kick at the can for uh, Android VR AR. Uh, they've been down this road a couple of times here. My first VR device was actually an Android device, and then they quit. And now they're back. And that support is actually there from the Unity side of things. So I don't know if Android's uh, XR platform is going to go anywhere. Their track record is not amazing. But if you want to develop um, games for Android on uh, Google's devices, 
there is uh, support in the Unity side of things. And then on the MetaQuest side, Quest being the most popular VR headset out there, I think by a fairly large margin, uh, we got another a bunch of improvements there. Um, I think this is the foveated space thing. So uh, for centering, for focusing on rendering to the what your eye can actually see, but I might be wrong with my acronym there. App space warp support, build profiles from the MetaQuest platform. Oh wow, lost my voice for a second there. All right, I'm back. Uh, oops, I missed, all right, let's go back one second. Uh, in more immersive mixed reality support there as well and then increased in connectiveness for shared persistent anchors and multiplayer uh, mixed reality template now interesting enough this could be in the future side of things so it's hard to tell exactly when that'll be we do have improvements on the pc and console rendering side of things things like directx 12 uh, multi-threading you can see the performance improvements that they're claiming between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Same thing here for uh, reduced stuttering at runtime. And then we've got ray trace performance, performance improvements as well. Uh, and then on the Xbox side of things, we're having some improvements, including a GTK selector, uh, the ability to choose which saving API to use. Uh, so it doesn't use uh, Xbox games versus save files if you wish. And then we've got uh, stable key encryption available currently on Xbox for PC with Xbox console coming soon. Uh, now we're coming in here, a little bit more about performance, and I'll just skip the videos. Uh, new height of graphics performance. So richer world with deferred plus for ERP. A uh, big thing here is they have their new GPU resident drawer. This was added in 6, I thought, so um, must just be improvements they're announcing in 6.1. But basically, most of these things are just free um, performance improvements. So the renderer should just be faster, which is nice to see. And then variable rate shading support, and you can see the results of on versus off there as well. Again, uh, better rendering performance is what we're being uh, told there. It's one of those things you got your hands on it to see how it actually performs, but uh, again, free performance is generally quite nice. And then faster iteration and content optimization. So new LOD system, optimized memory storing for all LODs in a single mesh, and automatic LOD generation and setup in editor, which is nice. And then we re re reduce build times on the universal render pipeline with these new settings, and you see how much the, the times have actually decreased by, which is, uh, that's the total shader build times. Uh, quite a bit faster, which is a very nice stuff there. Uh, we have improvements to AI Sentis. Now, AI Sentis is their ability to run basically neural nets inside of your Unity game. Uh, accelerate inference on DirectX 12 platforms, Windows Editor and Player devices, and Xbox Series X and S. To be honest, I've never really understood the use case here. I, I've seen some examples. I've seen entire like games, virtualized games from Unity presentations uh, that were created using neural nets. I just never actually have seen why. So if you got a good idea of what you'd use Sentis for, do let me know in the comments down below because I haven't found a use case yet. I may just not be understanding, but that's the case. Uh, and we got uh, some new performance tools. Uh, so we've got uh, a dashboard here for your runtime performance, targeted recommendations on how to improve performance. And then we have an auditor that can analyze scripts, assets, project settings, and builds. Uh, so it'd be better to see the bottlenecks in your process. And then ECS. ECS is pretty mature at this point in time. We're now up to entities 1.4 so that we're talking about things like improvements, optimizations, and fixes, and consolidation of APIs. Same thing with the jobs compiler and profiler, uh, so just general improvements there as well. And then we're getting into this is Unity 7, but not being called Unity 7. These are the things for the future. Uh, ECS is going to be built in at the core, so it's not going to be an add-on. Um, they're basically going to build ECS job system, all that stuff, burst compiler, into the core. And what they'll do is make game objects use it, but pretty transparently. So you're going to get the performance of the new underlying system, but you'd be able to use game objects that you know and love today. So uh, that seems to be where they're going. The other big thing was the addition of .NET. Uh, so they're going to move over to core CLR. This brings them in, you know, you're going to get newer versions of C Sharp as they release. Uh, you're going to have better compatibility with the various different .NET projects that are out there and so on. Uh, so I know people definitely want them to switch over to core CLR from Mono. So that is what we are looking at there. And then we have content pipeline improvements as well. Step change in inter, uh, iteration time and on-demand importing. So we do have a new importing system coming. Uh, so we have faster imports in Unity 7, not called seven so unity future uh and then we got some other things going on here i'm gonna skip over most of these demos because we'll get to the uh the overview in a second everyone's favorite thing is ai integration now this first slide i'm actually on board with these are the kind of things that people actually like using ai for so automate repetitive tasks so you can actually tell it what to do in the editor so um 
delete all game objects that have this material attached, that kind of thing. I think this is very handy and useful in what I wanted. I, the, my first integration, my first experience with Unity was someone did a chat GPT integration where you could use it to control Unity. That is how I would have loved to see them focus things from the very beginning. And it seems like they are finally going there. Uh, and then we also have code generators coming in as well. Uh, and then on the asset gen, yeah, everyone's favorite thing. Uh, so they added uh, like texture generation tools that were yeah, and they added audio generation tools, which I actually haven't played with yet. Uh, and the world is just full of this stuff. And then we're actually going to have 3D asset generation coming in the future as well. Uh, so right now we have texture sprites and animations being generated. Uh, I Again, I've never gotten great results, and I'm not a huge Gen AI content fan. I know a lot of you aren't either. Uh, and this is a um, paid add-on inside of Unity. So it's probably the area that I'm least impressed with. And then we've got UI Toolkit. Now, this is the new UI system coming. Uh, this was going to be in 6, but it looks like 6.x. Like I don't actually know what 6.x does, because the 6.x mean it was released in 6, and it's going to improve throughout the, the lifespan. That's how I'm going to choose to read that. So uh, the new new UI toolkit is basically a new uh, toolkit for doing UI. Yes, great for the insight there, right, Mike? Uh, so what we've got here is World Space UI. So immersive XR experiences can be created with it. So you can place your UI anywhere in the, like spatially in the world, if you wish. Uh, full render chain integration, crisp, beautiful UI, advanced CSS filters. So you can do custom shaders, including shader graph integration with your UI. And it supports vector graphics. Vector graphics are lovely because you can scale them infinitely to a variety of different DPIs and they look exactly the same. And then we also have new accessibility features with the native screen reader. So this is for, um, you know, screen readers for, you know, vision impaired type people out there. Uh, so updated uh, API for the UI toolkit and native screen reader support for Windows and Mac OS. Improvements on the animation side of things. You can remap anything to anything, reuse clips with less storage, uh, animation blending improvements, including uh, rig graph for pose correction. And you've got asset management tools in there as well, including previewing your sockets and attachments with your animations. Uh, we also have better performance and less complexity for the animations. One part of that is support for jobs and burst without requiring entities. So you can get the performance advantage of the jobs and burst system without having to actually use ECS as it stands. And then in seven and beyond, it's not going to really matter anymore anyways, because it'll be built into the core. Uh, power though complexity, so multiple track support and custom properties and events. And then um, we have hierarchical state machines there as well. And then in the world of physics, we've got a number of improvements. The one thing that I find a little bit confusing here is you're going to have switchable backhands. So you can switch between physics and Havoc, which is very cool. By the way, Havoc is a paid add-on, just what else you want to know about. Uh, but what you'll notice here is it doesn't actually say Unity physics. So I don't know if you can switch between Unity physics, physics, and Havoc. I'm assuming it's all three, and it's just a weirdly worded slide, but I'm not 100% certain there. On top of that, Unity physics itself is getting some improvements, including new solvers and tooling updates, and then we are getting an entities vehicle controller for ECS-based projects, which is compatible with Unity physics and Havoc physics, but interestingly enough, it does not mention NVIDIA physics. So the switchable backend falls apart pretty fast if you have things that aren't supported by all of them. So again, a little confused on that one. Uh, we got some team improvements as well for their cloud stuff. So Build autom automation is integrated in the editor. Build in the cloud for all main targets, being WebGL, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and the Xbox series. No PlayStation. Uh, and then live collaboration and project sharing. So share local files with your team and preview, preview files on any device. So if you're doing collaborative stuff, it's uh, got you covered there. Let's just move on, move on, move on, move on, and move on. Come on. Let's go. All right, here we go. So we got the new project center. Uh, so uh, easier access to popular ecosystem solutions. Discover recommended solutions for your project. It's basically a way of saying, oh, would you like to add this, this, and this to your game? And it'll do it automatically. Accelerate prototype and pre-production. So focus on reaching your game milestones and assemble an experiment quickly. Uh, in terms of multiplayer improvements, consolidated Unity 6 stacks, so distributed authority and host migration, matchmaker improvements, and cross-platform burst determination, determinism, sorry, and cost-effective deployment, so ARM, Linux ARM server build target, and multiplayer local host and Android support for multiplayer targets, and then going into the future, convergence of net code, so there's another area that you can see us right now. We've got the, the net code for game objects and net code for 
um, ECS, that will obviously be merged together as well. So uh, a lot of the confusion of the, the split rendering pipelines, the split ECS versus game objects, etc., they're all going to be consolidated together in a future version of Unity 7 that is not being called Unity 7 right now. Uh, and then on the multiplayer side of things, uh, multiplayer game server hosting. So if you want to use their servers, the options are available. There is web support for that. And their voice and text chat uh, integrations and some improvements there as well. Uh, live ops improvements, Unity back and secret manager, live ops schemas and cloud code local debugger, live content, so ship assets and configs faster, optimized monetization workflow, and safer updates across Unity services and player insights, analyze segment and target players and devices, optimized performance retention, engagement, and monetization that is all coming in the future and i think we're pretty much there so uh unity 6.1 uh, is uh, currently available in beta again i expect it to ship within a month or so it's, it's very close it's been in beta for a couple of months now and that is it uh, that is the roadmap at unity i would have thought that they would play up unity 7 angle a little bit more uh but they actually kind of downplayed it in this release so i think we might be with 6.x for a little bit while longer than initially intended but that's just my guess here so that is the roadmap for unity developers let me know what you think is there anything you like anything you dislike let me know in the comments down below i'll talk to you all later goodbye